You're probably aware that HTTPS and a lock in the browser address bar indicate a secure connection to a website. Usually part of the address bar will turn green also. The most commonly used security protocol is SSL, which stands for Secure Sockets Layer. That's what we'll take a look at in this tutorial. SSL serves a dual purpose. It validates or authenticates the website you're visiting, showing that the site is indeed who they claim to be. This can prevent phishing attempts where you're redirected to a site that looks almost identical to the legitimate site. SSL also encrypts data so it is readable only by the intended recipient. The most common use for SSL is on checkout pages for e-commerce websites, but it can also be used on any site that handles confidential information. If you're accepting credit card payments online through a merchant account, you're required to use SSL whenever you transmit credit card information in order to be PCI compliant. If you're processing payments on another website, such as PayPal or Google Checkout, you don't need SSL since you're not transmitting or storing credit card information on your site. In order to add SSL to your site, you'll need to follow these basic steps. Purchase a dedicated IP address. Purchase an SSL certificate. Install the certificate. Set the desired pages on your website to use secure mode. Although some web hosts offer shared SSL certificates, those shouldn't be used on e-commerce sites. To use SSL on your own domain requires a private SSL certificate. In order to use a private certificate, the first thing you'll need is a dedicated IP address for your site. If you're on a shared web hosting account, most likely your IP address is shared with other users. If you have cPanel hosting, you can find the IP address in the left column of your control panel. You can order a dedicated IP address through your hosting company. HostGator, for example, charges an additional $2 per month for a dedicated IP. When a user visits a secure website, the SSL certificate provides identification information about the website. You can click the lock icon in the address bar to view information about the certificate, including who it was issued by, who it was issued to, the type of certificate, and the certification dates. In order to establish a secure connection, you'll need to have an SSL certificate. Third-party certificate authorities issue the SSL certificates. They are available from a variety of companies. You can usually purchase certificates from these companies through your web host. That's generally the easiest way. Often your host will install the certificate for free if you purchase through them. Remember that part of the purpose of an SSL certificate is to provide authentication or validation of the identity behind the website. There are currently three types of authentication. Domain validated authentication is less expensive and you will receive the certificate faster, but it offers a low level of validation. The validations are often automated, performed by email or phone. Business or identity validation authenticates the organization behind the domain name and can take 1 to 10 days for approval. Extended validation certificates currently provide the highest level of authentication of the business behind the website. Sites with an EV certificate typically display with an extended green bar, such as on the PayPal site. Generally, SSL certificates are issued for one domain name. However, there are more expensive certificates you can purchase. Wildcard certificates work on multiple subdomains of a single domain. Multi-domain certificates allow for different domains, all hosted on the same server. Once you've decided the type of certificate you want, you'll need to create a CSR through your web host. A CSR is a certificate signing request. You have to generate the CSR on the server that the certificate will be used on. The name used here for your domain must be in the exact form you want to use it for the SSL pages. For example, if you enter example.com, that's a different name than www.example.com. After you submit your CSR request, you'll receive the signing request text. Now you're ready to purchase the SSL certificate. 
Just for an example, this is a purchase form on the Komodo website. As I stated earlier, there are many certificate providers, and don't forget you can usually purchase directly through your web host. If you're doing it yourself, though, you'll paste the CSR text you received into the indicated box and complete and submit the rest of the form. Now you go back to your web host and have them install the certificate. HostGator has another form where you can enter the information you received when you purchased the certificate. They also have a handy flowchart of the process involved in purchasing a third-party SSL certificate. This whole process can be greatly simplified by purchasing through your web host. Then they will handle most of these steps for you. Just to give you a ballpark idea of pricing, here are a variety of certificates offered by HostGator through Komodo. In general, you can see that the pricing increases based on the level of validation. Multiple subdomain or multiple domain licenses are also more expensive. Check with your own host for exact prices. SSL certificates are usually purchased for one year, although multi-year certificates are also available. Either way, you'll need to renew before the expiration date. Once you have the SSL certificate installed, go to the Menu Manager in the Joomla Administrator panel and edit a menu option you want to use SSL. In the Metadata Options, set the Secure option to On. When you access that page on your site, it will use a secure connection. You can also find a plugin called Yerio SSL Redirection in the Joomla Extensions directory. This can help you control which pages should use HTTPS and which should not. Here's an OS training tutorial on the SSL Redirection plugin. I've covered a lot of ground in this tutorial. Basically, first you need to decide whether you need SSL or not. If you're not taking credit card payments directly on your site, or handling any other extremely confidential information, then you shouldn't need it. If you do need SSL, make sure you have a dedicated IP address. You'll need to have a private SSL certificate. Decide the level of validation you'd like, the number of domains or subdomains you need covered, and the number of years to purchase the certificate for. I recommend checking to see what SSL certificates are offered by your web host first. That's the easiest route to go in terms of both purchasing and having the certificate installed.